Welcome back to everyone's favorite podcast, A Couple Pines Pod. Bing bong. Fuck you, Lenny. <laughs> um, so last week we got a little in- introspective. Is that a word? Introspective. Mm. It is a word, but it's not what we did. Um, last week we got a little... Uh, little intense so this week we're gonna um do it again <laughs> yes this time it's my this one might hit home well, for also, it it does tie in a little bit to what we discussed we did say it once yeah but um this was my dank gf olivia's idea um, sick idea and i think it's a good topic for us because i'm gonna read the straight up shit and then you can do your thing. I can I can work my magic. So this week, the boys are gonna tackle. Shouts out Super Bowl. Yes. This is gonna be we gotta make a prediction too. Four days after the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, because we made predictions last year. Also, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, yeah. Mine was great. Yeah, it was. Um I yours, was there. Was, yours was I hope you weren't. I did some. What do you nasty mean? We shit. rented the hotel room together. Oh, Dude, that's gotta, right. We probably fucking, shouldn't tell them. Got a fucking hotel room, bro. Um, <laughs> what, so what man? is it? Bengals, Rams? Bengals, Rams. I know your prediction. Congratulations, Matthew Stafford. No. Way to go, pal. No. Proud of you. As someone who Freaking doesn't follow football and doesn't really give a shit, Joe Burrow's taking us all the way. Big Dick Joe's riding that train? Big Dick Joe's fucking tossing too many touchdowns too that's alliteration many. kids got a surplus of touchdowns see here's the, the thing the rams are gonna be like oh shit joe burrow rammed us in the ass with his incredible quarterback skill dude but also i heard via flagrant two that uh the rams defense is apparently like the best in the league and so true a Apparently the Bengals offense is like really good because Joe Burrow, but their defense sucks ass. So who knows? But look this just because I just because I love chili ice cold burrow. I'm rooting for the Bengals. Look this up. It has been also Bengals are way more badass than Rams. Yeah. It has been 33 years yeah. since the Bengals have been to a Super Bowl. Yeah, that's ex- underdog mentality. <clears throat> what? Organization is 33 synonymous with uh, free Masons, the Browns, the free Masons. They won their playoff game by three. Three is an Illuminati number. I didn't watch the game. I don't know. So right now we have 33 years since they've been to the Super Bowl, which is synonymous to and the Free Mason Society. And they won by three points in their playoff game, which is synonymous with the Illuminati. So and and Joe Burrow's most famous throw is at a 33 degree angle. And he, I've heard which rhymes with that bangle he has a 33 degree bend in his cock. Exactly, which rhymes with Glock, which shooters shoot. And Joe bet that makes Joe Bangle Joe Burrow <laughs> the Bangle a shooter, which means 33 all shots. the 33s and shooter shooting means that they're probably going to win. And that's how I made my prediction. Wow. Are you Nostra Mac? Uh, Machiavelli. Machiavelli. No, he was like into law and shit. I used him in a you song. You just define the used, laws of the universe. Though. I used him in a song once and I Googled his name and I learned way more about him than I expected to. So there we go. Bengals are he, pulling he was it off. Like, he was like a Roman law mate. He like created law. Well, not really, but he helped. We've got Bengals and a blowout over here, and we've got Matthew Stafford pulling off the impossible. More like Math Matthew gonna get shafted, <laughs> shafted by Joe. <laughs> All right. Anyway, um, what a nice intro. Not really, because now we're just like, <gasps> yeah. But if you what we're gonna talk about is like the some ride, pretty you're happy. serious shit. Um, 
We're keeping it light and fluffy before we deliver you the bacon and eggs. We just well, gave the, you a cloud of potatoes. Fluff. Oh, we just gave you the fluffy before Gordon Ramsay eggs. Before you blanket it with bacon and cheese and mm. salt and pepper. No Giving ketchup. You the no ketchup, slam. though. And then we toss that fucking, that everything bagel on top, dude. The Lumberjack special. Oh, fuck. <laughs> um... <laughs> That's gonna get us a strike. So anyway, if you haven't if you haven't caught on yet, <laughs> this week we're talking about the Mandela effect. Oh, this is gonna get a fun. This is gonna be fun. The the Mandy Mandel effect. Man- Who knows? Yeah. Maybe the Super Bowl will be a part of it. Like, let's say by some stroke of God, the Rams win. Eventually generations from now when Jer- joe burrow is the new fucking tom brady everyone's gonna be like no he won that super bowl no they won won't. so anyway okay let's now talking just... about? they won the super bowl so if you don't know what the the van mello effect no i i fucked up because this website starts with a v if you don't know <laughs> what the man mandela effect is The Mandela effect refers to a situation in which a large mass of people believes that an event occurred when it did not. There are hundreds of examples of this. My next tab is 45 examples of the most famous ones. And if you have heard of it, oh my God, it's a slideshow. Get the fuck out of here. What? Okay, let's start off right now with the Curious George one. What are they trying to say here? The Mandela effect, uh, question of most mundane memories. In 2019, the New York Times crossword puzzle made it the theme defined as a recent refinement of false memory that typically refers to pop culture or current event references. So um I don't know why Curious George is okay. There. Curious George does not have a so tab. it all it all begins just Nelson Mandela's death. Uh, Everyone thinks he died in prison in 2013. Or wait, what? Named after. Okay, so he did die in 2013. But a shitload of people across the globe believe that, or distinctly remembers what this says. He died in prison in the 1980s when he was imprisoned for trying to end up um, something. YouTube will strike me if I say out loud. Uh, bam so the Mandela effect is basically everyone thinks he died in the 80s when he didn't die until 2013 as a free man and it's applied to other misremembered moments in history so Jif number one it's always been Jif not Jiffy people swear there was a Jiffy peanut butter back in the day but they speculate they're combining Jif with its competitor Skippy no, and everyone knows it's Jif peanut butter, shitty one. Okay, what is this? This says it's Looney Tunes, T U N E S, not Tunes, T O O N S. It's always been T O O. Well, this is also why we're talking about it because most of these, it's like, like Tune T U N E S doesn't even make no. sense. No, and it this will come up, but I want to talk about it right now. Luke, I am your father. That happened, bro. I am so certain on the train with you right now that it's Luke. I am your father. your father. Not you killed my father. Obi-Wan and then he never says, told you. And then he says, no, I am your father. No, dude. No, that's no. shitty writing, bro. Anyway, this doesn't make sense. The Looney Tunes ones debunks this for me immediately because there's no fucking way that a cart Toon T O O N company would make their name Looney T U N E S as in musical. There wasn't that was never, it's not like it was a musical cartoon. They had fun music behind the cartoon. Okay, I hate this one one too. No, I hate this one. Yeah, this one really gets me going. Okay, Berenstein or Berenstein? It's Berenstein for me, dog. I own original copies. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Who the yes. fuck calls it Baron Stein? What are they? Apparently, the guy created, created in a lab by Doctor Frankenstein. What are these bears partially human? What is this Goldilocks story written all over? Where, where's Rob Zombie making the remake of this? 
Why is Rob Zombie your favorite director? Because he makes great horror films. No, it's definitely Berenstein. It's Berenstein Bear. The Berenstein Bears. Not Berenstein. That's bullshit. Yeah, what are they got? Stains? That's Berenstein bullshit if I ever heard it. Then we got fucking... He does not have a tail. Okay, yeah, the tail looks unnatural. Okay, you're right. Okay, moving on. Perfect. That's what this says. It was never there. Are you freaking out? Okay, moving on. Yeah, he never had a tail. We're on the same page. Sex in the city or sex and the city? I thought it was sex I, and the city. I don't know. I th- yeah, and the city. Okay. Sex. That's just dumb people. Uh, Febreze or Febreze with one E. Okay, that's stupid. Yeah, it's yeah. double E's. This, you might use this stuff every day, but be honest. You thought it was Febreze with two E's, oh. didn't you? No. It- no, I didn't. Okay. Wait. There's Wait, Febreze. are they telling us we're wrong? I, know, I took the garbage out. There's no Febreze in the house. No, it's two E's. Febre- it's two E's. No, look. No. Febreze. It's not? But that's not how you spell it. It's one? Mandela effect, baby. All right, let's go through a couple more. Come. Okay, here we go. The most con- confounding one of all. Oscar Mayer Wieners. There's an A in Mayer. Honest to goodness, we thought it was Meyer. Oscar Mayer. We- How does an A sound like an E? Oscar Mayer Wiener. Yeah. How does an A? Does a Y next to an A make it sound like an E? That's not true. It is. It's an A. No. It's no. an A. Okay. What? This is so absurd. How? How does M A Y E R S spell Oscar Myers? No, the second one is the right sketchers. I don't know who did S K E T C H E R S. It's S K E C H E R S. Yeah. No. This is the right one. Yeah. Okay. Oscar Mayer. Okay. This one gets me caught up. Because I think it's that one. The right one, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I remember that as well. What's the left? Some like. Are they mixing it with Apple Jacks? The flowers fell down. Oh my God. The house is haunted. Jesus. They don't like talking about uh, that. Okay. Who's not this? Not going to talk about that. Um, the Monopoly Ooh. Man. He has a fucking monocle. I bro. specifically remember a monocle. Or more like the fact he doesn't have one. Maybe we're combining the monopoly man with the planters mascot who does have a planters peanut has a monocle yeah they, they're drawn in the same style this one i can get behind as mandela effect of just because then we're gonna move into the causes but this falls under like combining two pop culture things into one thing and you confuse the two of them this maybe. one i this one makes sense oh i can't maybe that's why i remember the front the very front of the Monopoly box having the Monopoly guy sit no. there with a hand on his... Now that now that I said that out loud, this looks wrong, and him without yeah. it, that's the Monopoly logo. Once you said that... I think it's a mix of different I think you're things right. drawn in similar styles. It has to be. What's next? Here Pikachu, we go. We talked about... No, I read to this one. I read into this one when I f- first... Uh, Gotta catch couple, them all. A couple weeks ago, I was listening to a podcast and they talked about the Mandela effect. Um, this is because Pikachu's form bef- right, before true. he hits Pikachu. Oh, yeah, the little has, tiny has this tail. Yep. Okay. But then he has brown on his tail for a shadow because it's anime. that makes a lot yeah. of sense. So that one's simple. Kick cat kick. What's the difference? The oh the, the dash yeah no it's, it's just Kit Kat with no dash. Are you That's, sure? Yes, I'm positive. My mother's favorite chocolate is Kit Kat. I know, and I also you love know Kit Kats. looking no, at the Kit Kat with that the dash is unnatural. Yeah, that doesn't look good whatsoever. Fruit Ooh, of the loom. It's got the fruit of the thing. loom. Fruit of the loom. This wait is wait a minute. No. Does it? This is a Mandela effect. This is just rebranding because it did have that. Okay. My dad's a huge Fruit of the Loom dude. 
At one point, say. it had the cornucopia, and then they got rid of it. I was gonna. This say. is their logo now, but I I promise you, and I'm gonna do research and put this in the video. This was their logo at a certain point. It had that. I know for a fact. When I used to wear that's tidy not whities. that's not Mandela fit. This is like 2021, like. Gen Z Mandela yeah, effect. Back in shit. elementary like, school, yes, when I this wore this is tidy right, whities, but this is also that. right. Yes. Yeah, okay. No, it's cheese it. Wait, a that's minute. not even a thing. No, it's cheese. It's cheese it. Cheese it's. Well, people pluralized it as cheese it's, but the box says cheese. Trust me, I've eaten plenty, many a boxes of cheese it, but people say cheese it's because it's not. It's not pluralized. Are you positive? I'm. This is my most definite one. This, this is your gonna most have so much. So this is your positive. curious George because I was that positive on. Curious oh yeah, George. no, no. no okay. I promise you, I eat cheese it because there's multiple of them in a bag. It's not one you, cheese. You it. added a Z there. That's why people added the Z because it doesn't. The name in our language does not make sense. So you pluralize it because you get a box of cheese it. Okay. Yeah. I eat these almost every day. I, I eat these for breakfast, lunch, I, and no, dinner. I, I do. I go to work and I pop two Kratom and then I go to craft services and I say, can I get a coffee with a little bit of hazelnut creamer, a bag of goldfish, and a bag of cheese its and I only say the S because that's how society knows them. But on their box and on their bags, I, fuck, I wish I had a bag in my backpack. There's no Z. It's okay. cheese it. Double stuff Oreo, it's, double stuff Oreo. It's that one. No. I don't care about that. We're skipping it. Okay, this one's intriguing as shit. That looks the same. So... Mona Lisa smiles. And like I said, I have to now cut every single one of these into the episode, but many people have claimed that she used to have more obvious smile. Well, it's not no. like they changed it. She never had a smile. Ooh, C3PO is a silver like okay. Whoa, whoa, no, this is bullshit. Because at one point. He has a silver leg because he loses his leg in the movie before. But also C-3PO goes through so many metamorphoses. If you watch them from Phantom Menace to uh, Return just, of the Jedi. They're playing and on emotion here. In the new ones, he has even more, but fuck those. In the original six, especially in the original three, I think Empire Strikes Back, which is another Mandela effect thing. Yep, he has a silver leg because in a new hope he loses his leg and they have to replace it with some other droid of his nature's leg. But then, like, episode one, Phantom Menace, he's wires and basic hardware. Yeah, episode two, he's like this hodgepodge of droid parts and like his arms red and his he's a head's complete man, black. And yeah, episode three, he's the solid gold. Episode four, he's a solid gold, but then he loses it, has a chrome leg. Loses episode five, it in he has Cloud a chrome City. Leg, or maybe episode six. I don't fucking know. Either way, this is not Mandela effect. No. This is just the progression of a character. I'm on you with show. that. I don't care. I don't care either. <laughs> what? It, what? Chartreuse? Chartreuse? Don't know. Life? Oh, this, this one's interesting. Life is like a box of chocolates is not what Forrest Gump said. If you listen closely, he says life was like a box of chocolates. Life was like That's a stupid. box. Of, life was like a box of chocolates. But he also says life is like a box of chocolates. No, you doesn't. never know That's what Mandela you're going to get. Then there's, we already talked about this. Skip that. What is that? While some swear the Black Eyed Peas released their song Boom Boom Pow in 2008. It really came out in 2009. Fergie doesn't sing, I'm so 2008, you're so 2000 and late. She says, I'm so 3008, and you're so 2000 and late. Okay, that's wild, because that's not true. Are you kidding me? I mean, it might be true. I'm so 3008, so you're so 2000. Dude, 2000 there's no. no fucking way yep. that that... 
she just, okay so now in that front of her, okay yep. i'm sufficiently mind blown okay the next one is luke i'm your father this is what we're gonna end on because we looked it up before we started and all he really said was i am your father no i am your father so that being said what causes all of this shit which there, after I read these before we started, there is no definitive answer. But it's just so, it's slightly concerning and it's also just so perplexing that like, this is a thing. Yes. And I'm going to cut in the pictures and we're going to do the slideshow together when the episode comes out. But like, why... Because this doesn't answer my no. question. Why do we so think distinctly that? remember? Like if you if you're a new time listener or watcher, Colin and I are incredibly large Star Wars fucking nerds, and every ounce of me knows that it's Luke, I am your father. Not you killed my father. No, I am your that's not it, bro. Also, it's such a shitty line. You killed my father. Way more powerful. Luke. Direct address. I the am your father. only thing that comes to my mind is... That's what <clears throat> bothers me about this shit. People kept and saying... And then also, come on, boom, boom, pow, bro. Yeah. Why would she address the 3000s if it came out in 2006? Yeah. So for Luke, I am your father. It's either it was... No, I am your father. And people started to go around and put people's names in front of it and say that is something I am your father. The first cause of but at the same time, if you're if anyone anywhere just reading words, if you read one character saying, You killed my father, and the other one says, No, I am your father. It's so much less powerful than what they actually said. Yeah, you just reiterated what I just said. I swear to God. Put down the dark saber. It bro. was <laughs> it was it was Luke, I am your father. Okay, so let's uh, let's agree on that, even though according to YouTube, that's not I'm about to fuck my day up tomorrow and watch Empire Strikes Back tonight. No, I have the original DVD. You do? Yes. Well, not here, but oh. at my parents' house. Next time I go home, I'm watching it. And we'll settle this once and for all. Anyway, let's try and explain some of this, but none of it makes sense. Uh, false memories. This is a thing, but it's not since I'm in school for psychology. Get not smart with it. No, I'm, I mean, I'm not. It's useless, but um false memories i did take a semester class on well not on it but it it was when i took forensic psychology false memories were a huge part of it and that's how wrongful conviction convictions and things like that happen so basically with false memories and like i've caught myself having false memories like you remember either a traumatic or like super influential event on your life so like as major star wars fans we saw that climax that arc in the story mm -hmm. and that i mean this is like a very low level version of false memories but like we saw that in terms of luke i am your father and since we were so attached to the protagonist luke when he said no i am your father your brain plays a tricks on you. Be your brain plays a trick on you because he's addressing Luke. He's addressing what oh. you associate with. So you insert the name instead of no. So then false memories can also happen in crimes where you do something ridiculously messed up, but in your head, it changes, it shifts the narrative when you see red to you justifying it happening or like if you have a super realistic dream about something that's happened and this has happened mm -hmm. to me like some 
bad or good experience I had. I have a dream that it was even better, or even worse. And then in your head from that point going forward, if it comes up in conversation or if you're thinking about it, your brain will make it that different version of what actually in real time happened. And it's like, it's a thing. So like false memories could sort of contribute to it. That, yeah. Uh, but it, but it gets me in the, in terms of like hundreds, if not thousands, if not millions yeah. of people can all have the same false memory. And like, you could argue word of mouth, but word of mouth is not that it's influential, but it's not like all of these things are fairly recent. So it's not like one guy created a false memory and then was like, this is what went down. Yeah. I mean, but the hundredth, the hundredth monkey effect. If there's one person saying, no, it was Luke. I am your father. And they get that strong enough feeling. But how do they convince? People. But how? That's just it. The how is wild. But that's why the Mandela they get it is wild. Enough people to convince it. By the time they have enough, if they come across across someone who's like, no, it was no, I am your father. They'll look at them and go, you're wrong. And you'll either conform to what we're telling you or you're going to be outcast from this conversation or night out on the town. Well, that's the other couple theories about it. And then this, this specific art. So like what you just described would be considered priming, which is one person directly influences another person's response to the stimulus, which in this case would be Luke, I am your father versus no, I am your father. Then there's confabulation, which I covered in my long explanation, which is the underlying false memories that lead to Mandela effect. So it's retellings of events that lack evidence or factual support, but the people receiving these state, these false statements or retellings trust in the person telling them. So that's like the word of mouth. Oh, okay. I'm going to grab you one, by the way. Thank you. But then this article ends. Uh, uh, what were we talking about? I forgot. We made a funny Instagram thing. I just got a heavy hint of lime from the first sip of this Budweiser. <clears throat> Do I have diabetes? Maybe. Or you're having a stroke. That could be it too. To tie it into last episode, the last explanation of the Mandela effect is alternate realities, parallel universes, which okay. say brings it back to us. Well, not us. It brings it back to episode 86. Welcome to 87, by the way, if you're still here. Um, basically, this definition suggests that um basically what we said last episode like something happened to the player that controls us in this alternate reality or parallel universe as a simulated reality that we are which we don't know if we are might be but this says that like that player did something that the previous player did and so our character was like oh this happened but then in the new game with the same character the alternate version happened oh that brings me back to a theory or a superpower taking us back to um superhuman episode so if you're a superhuman that can control time and you gotta follow me here your superpower is to control time on the field of what you set a timer to or an alarm. So to. like that Hayden Christensen movie after Jumper. Exactly. So let's say you have this superpower. 
you set an alarm for 715. That alarm goes off. AM or PM? AM. That's impo- oh. Let's go AM. Okay. That alarm goes off. You wake up, everything's normal. But for everyone else in the world, they never back. Actually, no, let me I'm, go to this yeah, one. This I'm, one will make I'm better so, sense. I'm so you get, lost. You get, gonna... drafted into, you get drafted into the war. You're okay. going into battle. Yeah. Your superpower is to control time. You set an alarm for, let's say, 25 minutes into battle. Okay. Your squad, your platoon is getting wiped the fuck out. You're seeing, for, for the first 25 for minutes. For the first 25 minutes. They're getting, you're battle. losing. You're getting destroyed. A very that alarm short goes off. Yeah. Everyone in the battle except you reverts back to the morning before, but you yourself keep the. What do you mean? Like once you win? No. So once the alarm goes off, you go back to the beginning. Everyone around you in the battle with you goes back to the morning before the battle. But But the battle, but, but in this reality that you're describing, the battle, like the the time reverts. So for everyone else around you, time reverts. But for you, the battle still happened. You still watched all. Okay, your so it's die. like it's like No Edge of Tomorrow, starring Pretty Tom much. Cruise and Emily Blunt. Yeah. So <laughs> now you become this ultimate weapon that you went through this battle. You saw what happens. So you can call the shots. You can call all the shots. But then now. who's to say that anyone around you, like if, but if you were in the other people's shoes, and you're. You didn't even say it was like the leader. Just some dude in your platoon is like, this is how we win. You'd be like, what? Shut the fuck up, dude. Get out of here. What do you know? But what if that's the Mandela effect? What if the controller well, that, is not. randomly going around? The architect The Mandela is- effect would be on all the other soldiers. Yeah, but then everyone they, else remembers but then, going another way. But then way. the effect is they convince you, even though you know that you guys won, that it went the other way and you guys lost so then even so reverting back to last episode what if the architect is going around just sprinkling that in around the masses to be like hey you think it went this way maybe wait a second wait a second but the uh, what gets me is like and that's what's weird and that's what none of the articles these articles say is like every ounce of my being thoroughly believes like luke luke i am your father father. or the other examples we we read i mean aside from like curious george but like i'm so 2008 every ounce of my being mirror mirror on the wall that's every ounce of my being that is life is like a box of chocolates every ounce of my being don't know that one. Flintstones, fuck that. C-3PO. Baron Berenstein Bears. Well, C three PO. I immediately debunk. Fuck that one. The Mona, Mona Lisa never smiles. The Mona Lisa never smiles. We know that. Double stuff versus double stuff. Don't give a shit. Cheese it. Every Jeez. ounce of my being. But it's so weird that just like, like this. It it some of it's just like rebranding. Kit Kat, in my lifetime, never had the dash. Like, that's what's weird about it. Damn. Is there some examples where I'm I'm just like, no. No. And then some of it's rebranding. And that's a debunker in me. And that's an issue I have to deal with. Also, I have therapy the day before this episode comes out. So maybe next week I'll be on board. I don't know. Yeah. Would it, would it be just a mass unawareness of a rebranding i think it's just in my head it just kind of breaks down to like either well either way actually like lack of attention Mm. because even the ones i'm like no i know that happened maybe it's just lack of attention and what gets me is like when you look it up of course like we looked up Luke, I am your father. And then the clip that popped up, the 30 second clip was I, no, I am your father, which could easily be doctored. Could, could. So we have to go back into the archives, the originals, which I have on DVD at my mom's house, and see on the original copy 
if it's Luke, I am your father or no, I am your father. Cause like I said at the beginning, or maybe I said last episode, most of this shit has been remastered. No, I said it between episodes. Yeah. Most of this shit has been remastered, re-edited, yeah. re like adr which is recording after the picture is recorded like they, it's so easy to actually change the reality in which whatever project we're talking about exists like maybe curious george had a tail maybe it was before our lifetime maybe in the 70s and 80s he had a tail and then they rebranded and got rid of it to make him a little more relatable curious george is a chimp Chimps don't maybe, have long tails. Maybe back in the late seventies, when James Earl Jones as Darth Vader said, "Luke, I am your father." Maybe when they remastered it in two thousand, whatever. Disney is they known said, yeah, to mess with people. Exactly. They said, "No, I am your father." Maybe Kit Kat used to have a hyphen in it in the sixties and seventies, and in our lifetime, they dropped it. Just like Coke used to have real cocaine in it. Exactly. Bring it back, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been <laughs> your favorite podcast. You're you're the uh, what I say? Everyone's favorite podcast. Everyone's favorite podcast. Couple pints pod. Safe to say. We're going to take over one day. Yeah.